right uh, stopping distance now I'm going to use this little green car and I'm going to use this little black and white bird um, to kind of illustrate what the idea is behind this idea of stopping distance so first off what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that this little green car is driving down the road having a great old time um, as far as the driver is aware there is no hazard in front of him and because of that he's just going to be coasting along as normal when the hazard appears the driver is going to react and then slam in the brakes so that hopefully can stop before hitting the hazard so we can actually look at the distances that are involved there so we must imagine that the car is driving along All right, there we go set up my stage properly the car is driving along and boom something comes out of nowhere so at this point on the road my driver is going to start reacting now even though the hazard is, is there the car hasn't been able to immediately stop so the driver is going to carry on as normal while he's thinking through the problem this will happen in split seconds the average human reaction time about 0 0.7 seconds so we'll be thinking, goodness gracious, there's something on the road there. I've got to hit my brakes. A message will be sent from the eyes all the way down up to the, to, the, to the brain and all the way down to the feet that will say, right, hit those brake pedals, please. So my car is driving along. And it's only at this point that the brake pedals are pushed. Now the driver has done everything that it can at this point. Now it's up to the car. The brake pads, which are usually around the wheels, which are always around the wheels, of the car will then start to increase the friction between the wheel and the brake pads. This will transfer some of the kinetic energy into a, into a thermal store. It will stop the car from moving forward. It will do work against the forward motion of the car. So the brake pads are going to start. That means that the car is going to start slowing down. However, it's not instantaneous. In fact, brakes are designed to slowly stop a car instead of locking the wheels. When you lock the wheels, that's what leads to tailspins and uncontrollable deceleration. So we thought about it, we started the brake pads going and tires screeching, we finish up at this point well before our hazard, which is apparently a 30 foot tall magpie. So the total distance it took to stop the car will be equal to this distance here, the thinking distance, plus the braking distance. Now, none of you will be driving yet, but this is something that I'd like you to remember for when you do get in your very own death machines, that we can affect the thinking distance and we can affect the braking distance. The amount of time it takes the wheels to stop depends upon the friction between the wheel and the road and also how effective the brake pads are on the inside of the wheel. Okay, so the orange is the brake pad, the black is the road and the, the blue is the wheel. What are some things that will affect how effectively the friction can be generated? Well, if we put some ice or some water on the road that will act as a lubricant and will reduce the friction between the tire and the road so we can see that road conditions will affect how quickly my braking distance or how small my braking distance will be if you have an old car you may have worn pads because the friction will break it down ever so slightly over time there are also little grooves I mean, these are not to scale, little grooves in the tyres that we call treads. The function of those treads is to get rid of any water that might be stuck on the outside of the wheel. So if there is water, it goes into the little gaps in the treads, allowing there to be a surface for friction between the roadway. So if you've got what we call worn tread, then it's less likely that there's going to be friction between the wheel and the road if you do go over any kind of water. The really scary one is the thinking distance, because this is all to do with the brain. Okay, I'm going to draw a cloud because I can't draw a brain. Anything that affects the brain will affect the thinking distance. And we have two different types of things that can affect the thinking distance. We can either increase 
or decrease the reaction time. Okay, now just be aware that this is the reaction time, not how quickly your reactions are. If we speed up your reactions, then we um, decrease the reaction time. If we slow down your reactions, we increase the reaction time. So what things will increase the reaction time? Well, if you ever um, partake of anything like a, uh, a depressant, which is a class of chemicals which affect the nervous system by slowing down the, the neurotransmitters, uh, common depressants, alcohol, and any kind of opioids. Um, so class A drugs, painkillers. What will decrease the thinking time? Um, any kind of a stimulant. So something like caffeine. So by drinking caffeine, you decrease the thinking time and increase your reaction time. Something that will also increase your reaction time, which is you know, super dangerous but not talked about a lot, is tiredness or fatigue. If you're tired, it takes you longer to react. So anything that increases this number, the reaction time, will increase the thinking distance. Anything that decreases this number will decrease the thinking distance. Your Breaking distance will be affected by any of these things on your tires. One thing I did forget to mention, whoopsie, good old Newton's second law. Um, if you have a small car and a big car, so if you've got a small car and something like a truck, this has obviously got more mass, which means it will be harder to stop. The other thing that will affect it if we have two small cars And one of them is going 20 meters per second and the other one is going 40 meters per second. That will increase your stopping distance too. Not just your braking distance, but also your thinking distance. So, sorry, I forgot to mention that. I knew I'd forgotten something, but we're doing this in one take. One take, McKelvey. What does this mean? So, we'll go back to the, uh, the example that we had earlier on. I've got my car and I've got my bird. Now, let us imagine that instead of having a thinking distance that is this long, this little car driver has instead taken, um, has had four pints of beer. So he's got a depressant in the system. That means that the thinking distance is going to increase. Now, the braking distance will stay the same. The braking distance will stay the same because the car is still in the same conditions and nothing else has changed. So my car will be driving along, da, 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 30 foot magpie jumps out, then we start thinking, oh goodness gracious me, there's something that might affect me, I better press the brakes. At this point now, the brakes will be um, pressed. However, not in enough time to stop a collision.